Buongiorno a tutti. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Buongiorno a chi è collegato. Buongiorno. Ci sono ancora, ci sono ancora 5 minuti. Abbiamo ancora 5 minuti e poi partiamo. Posso fare una prova di condivisione della presentazione? Sì, dai, presenta. Vediamo un po' se va. Sì, si vede. Ok, si vede bene? Sì, sì. Non si interrompe? Si fa. Se rompe ogni video, non si fa. Eh, <ride> Dovrei riuscire a rimettere lo schermo intero da qualche parte. Adriano. Ciao. Salve a tutti. Ciao, ciao. Buon pomeriggio a tutti, anche dal Centro Operativo Nazionale. Sono oh. Lorenzo Di.
buongiorno. 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 Vado, vai a te. Possiamo andare. Let's go. Uh, good morning to everyone we stay in New York and good afternoon with uh, people we stay in Italy. And uh, uh, nowadays we, in this meeting, we will talk about uh, drought uh, in Italy. Uh, drought uh, is a phenomenon that uh, occurred especially in the last uh, 20 years. And uh, we talk about uh, data, uh, precipitation, drought, uh, the intensity. We talk about uh, the way in which we can uh, prevent, uh, mitigate uh, the phenomenon. And we talk about the way in which uh, we can manage the emergencies. And uh, I want uh, first uh, thank you to the organizer of this meeting, uh, to my foundation, Earth and Water Agenda, uh, CREA, the Institute for Research in Agriculture, Policies and Bioeconomy, and uh, uh, the Emiliano Romagnolo Canal, uh, that's a, a most big uh, canal, uh, irrigation canal in Italy. And uh, I want to thank also the participants, the speakers uh, to this meeting that uh, uh, are going to intervene uh, on this team. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll uh, bring uh, many, many uh, interesting things uh, about uh, uh, this uh, phenomenon for the Italy. Uh, I think that uh, we can uh, start in uh, the first speaker, am I? Uh, I intervene. Uh, I will talk about, uh, uh, I, make, I will make a, a general and brief overview of the problem of drought in Italy. Uh, I give, I gave, give uh, some uh, data and uh, some uh, interpretation of the phenomenon and some uh, topic for policies of mitigation. And uh, I start uh, saying that uh, uh, in a controfactual uh, way, we can say that uh, Italy is a raining country. 
if we compare the precipitations in Italy compared to the rest of the world, we are at the same level. And if we compare with the other uh, European countries, uh, precipitation in, uh, in Italy are more and more over uh, the European average. And then we can say that uh, in, it in Italy, uh, there is not a, a structural lakeness of water, but we have uh, some condition that uh, could uh, link to the, the drought in some, uh, in some uh, condition, in some territories, and some uh, uh, times. Uh, we have three conditions uh, linked to the fact that uh, the uh, climate of Italy is a Mediterranean climate, and uh, we have three conditions, uh, two critical conditions. The first one is uh, the temperature. Uh, in Italy, uh, if we have uh, on average 300 uh, million or uh, cubic meters of uh, precipitation, we have uh, uh, more than half uh, uh, of this uh, research that uh, uh, we, we lost uh, caused by the evo evapotranspiration. And then we have uh, uh, quite uh, half of the research that uh, uh, not uh, at disposal of the human uh, uh, needs. And then we have uh, uh, another condition that is the variability of the uh, precipitation that uh, is a critical point. We have three kinds of uh, uh, variability in Italy that the precipitation. I may go share some slides. Three conditions. The first one is the, the uh, annual average of the precipitation. In the last 20 years, we have uh, uh, a very high peak in 2010 with uh, 371 billion of uh, cubic meters of uh, precipitation. In the last year, 2022, we have the uh, less uh, level of uh, precipitation with uh, 210. The difference uh, between this year, only 10 years uh, uh, of leg, is 160 billion of cubic meters. Is a very, very high difference. And then the, se the second variability is that of the territories. Uh, we have uh, uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia uh, with uh, 1,600 uh, uh, 650 uh, millimeters of precipitation in a year, and then we have uh, Puglia with uh, 648 uh, millimeters of precipitation. Uh, that, uh, we can say that uh, in Puglia, rain uh, one third, uh, almost one third of the Friuli Venezia Giulia. The difference is very, very high. And then the third uh, variability, uh, more linked to the uh, typical um, climate, uh, Mediterranean climate of Italy is uh, the difference between uh, uh, wet season and dry season. Uh, in November, uh, we have uh, uh, 175 millimeters uh, per mount of precipitation, and in July, we have 48 millimeters. Uh, also, in this case, we have a very, very big difference. Well, this variability that uh, uh, we suppose, we assert, uh, uh, after my intervention will be the intervention of uh, the speech of uh, Paolo Mercogliano, that uh, we talk about uh, the, the, the effect uh, on uh, the water of uh, the climate change. Uh, 
we, we know that uh, in the future, this variability, this three kind of variability, maybe uh, will be uh, stronger than now. And then uh, this situation in Italy uh, can become more serious, more critical. And then we, we maybe uh, we had uh, uh, seven uh, uh, drought, seven phenomenon of drought in Italy in the last 20 years. And uh, maybe that uh, uh, the phenomenon will be in the future, the next future, more frequent and more intense. And then we have to do poly policies in order to tackle, in order to mitigate this situation. Uh, we have uh, uh, four kind of uh, uh, policies uh, in order to uh, answer to this problem. The first one policy is more accumulation. We have to do new dams and reservoirs, uh, aquifer, recharge. Uh, I speak that uh, Rudy Rossetto, we talk about uh, aquifer recharge, the, the way in which we can do it and uh, remove silt from dams. Uh, remove silt because in Italy we have uh, uh, 4 billion of uh, cubic meters of uh, uh, silt that uh, uh, cover uh, the, 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 the dams. We have to reduce loss on supply water, water, new aquifers and irrigation pipes and maintenance of the old uh, infrastructure, infrastructures, because we have all the infrastructures and uh, uh, we lost a, a high quantity of water in the, in the distribution. Uh, nowadays, we uh, lost uh, uh, seven, uh, un, seven billion of uh, cubic meters of water. A very, very high uh, volume of water. The third is the greater efficiency in the use of water. Uh, we have to apply in the agriculture precision and drip irrigation. Uh, in some cases where the uh, situation of drought uh, tends to become more structural, we have to move from uh, high water intensive crop towards less water intensive crop because uh, it's very difficult to continue to uh, cultivate uh, water intensive crops if the drought becomes uh, structured. And the last one, but not uh, not the least, is alternative water availability because we can produce more water uh, by uh, the desalination plant, uh, as in the other part of the world, or reusing waste water, uh, because uh, the amount of water we have uh, of waste water is very, very high. We, we know that the level is uh, nine uh, billion of uh, cubic meters of water. I finished my uh, speech saying that uh, uh, these policies are uh, in a technical way uh, feasible. Uh, we need uh, a long-term plan because we cannot intervene in this case only uh, in a spot uh, in a spot uh, opera, in a spot worker, uh, we have to have much, uh, much money uh, at the disposal because uh, nowadays we have a few, uh, very few money uh, uh, in this uh, area. And then we have to support uh, these policies with science and technology. We have uh, uh, several uh, innovation that uh, could be uh, solved at this problem. But, uh, I finish uh, on that, but the most important thing I think that uh, uh, is uh, to have a coordination of uh, the policies. 
because policies have to be integrated. And then in the water, we have uh, many, many uh, subjects that uh, have an interest, have uh, competencies, have uh, uh, aims, uh, different aims, and so on. And then we have to have a coordination, a strong coordination at the central level. Uh, in these uh, days, uh, actual uh, government, uh, Italian government, try to individuate and uh, coordinator of, uh, to, to, to individuate a director of the water. Uh, the, yesterday, uh, uh, I chose one, uh, one solution, but uh, uh, for my view, it, uh, it is too, too weak, too weak. It is not uh, appropriate to the level of the problem. We have to have a very, very strong uh, uh, level of central coordination. Uh, without that, uh, I think that uh, it's very difficult, which is not impossible, to realize a long term plan for God. Thank you. I finish. I uh, leave the word to the next uh, uh, speaker. I, I want to introduce uh, Alessandra Pesce, Alessandra Pesce of Crea. Uh, I leave the word, Alessandra. Thank you very much, uh, Mauro. Thank you for the for having introduced me, um, and also for uh, underlining uh, uh, some uh, important uh, uh, issues uh, about uh, water management. In, uh, thank you also for uh, the organization of together with the, of this uh, side side event, uh, because uh, I think that in these days. Uh, water has uh, reserved uh, the attention it deserves. Um, unfortunately, uh, this attention uh, is due to, um, to the, the serious problems of scarcity that uh, have affected uh, all the, our planet in these, uh, in these last um, years and also in these uh, uh, last uh, months. Um, in, I think that uh, preserving uh, preserving water for civil uses, uh, uh, but also uh, for agriculture, is one of the main research drivers of CREA. CREA, um, you you say there is the national center of uh, research on uh, agri uh, agri food and on uh, agricultural economy. Uh, but also in particular for uh, the center that, of research that uh, I uh, manage, uh, which is called uh, Politica, uh, poli Policies and the Economy. Um, I just want to spend two words uh, on Korea, just to, 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 to have a framework. Um, we are the leading Italian research uh, organization that is dedicated to the agro-food uh, supply chain. And uh, our scientific uh, activity uh, covers agricultural crops, livestock, fishery, forestry, agro-industry, food science, and, so and socio-economics uh, uh, um, uh, topic. Um, and so our uh, know-how ranges from genetics and physiology to robotics uh, to also uh, the, all the um, techniques and also the economics on water management. And, uh, and now I want to focus uh, on this. Uh, mm, we have also uh, several farms and experimental fields uh, where we can uh, uh, do uh, a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, ex experimentation on uh, techniques and also uh, on uh, the, uh, the impact of the new technologies of the precision farming and, and, and so on. So I think uh, uh, it's important to, to underline uh, the role of the of the in this uh, in this um, in this framework, uh, because uh, it is not only uh, um, um, there are not only activities uh, on uh, the management, but also uh, on the 
um, innovation and the new technologies uh, that are devoted to the water management. Uh, so uh, this is the, the an, an important uh, thing to underline. Um, we uh, just to go to the um, to our uh, uh, to our activities. I I'll try to uh, share with you just two slides, not more than these, uh, which are the activities that uh, um, I don't know if you can see it what you can see also if this is okay okay can you see it can you see the slide oh, okay okay just just to be sure uh, and um uh, we have uh, uh, two types two uh, uh, main activities that are the technical assistance activities uh, uh, with the Ministry of, of Agriculture and also the uh, research activities. Um, I think that uh, today you will uh, uh, you will um, have uh, the, the, the presentation of uh, uh, two types of activity uh, that we uh, that we make for the technical assistance. First of all, the policy papers and the technical support on uh, on CAP and uh, on this issue, Raffaella Pergamo will uh, discuss what is uh, what are the the choices that uh, <clears throat> we, uh, Italy has made for uh, the um, the the national strategic plan on agriculture uh, with the um, resource of uh, the the CAP of the Common Agricultural Policy. Uh, and uh, another another very strong activity is the the development of national database uh, in uh, for the um, water management in agriculture. Uh, these two databases are called Sigrian and uh, Dania, and also uh, for these two activities uh, activities uh, uh, Veronica and uh, Marianna, Veronica uh, Manganiello and uh, Marianna. Ferrigno will, um, will explain you uh, which are the topics uh, on these two databases and the importance to know well the situation of uh, uh, the management of water also uh, uh, related to the investment. Mauro, you said before we need money, but also we need to spend better our money. Uh, I think that this, uh, this method should be stress uh, very very in a very strong way and uh, and also like and also we have uh, uh, several research activities uh, not only as i said uh, on uh, on the um, socio economic uh, field uh, but also on the um, uh, the environmental and sustainability uh, issues. Um, first of all, with the analysis of indicators of sustainability of water uh, water use, uh, on the impact of uh, ecosystem services, uh, and uh, also uh, with the participation on uh, uh, with um, in national, European, and international committee. Uh, such as uh, with D, uh, Prima, and also WASAG, uh, which is uh, we, well, for which we are uh, the, the focal point, uh, uh, the national focal point. Uh, we have also several agreements uh, and programs uh, of this exchange, uh, all, not, all, not only with university, uh, but also with um, a research center in uh, in Europe and uh, outside Europe too. Uh, I think that the role uh, that I have today now uh, for me uh, is just to um, explain the wide experience that uh, CREA has on this uh, on this topic, uh, and also the necessity uh, uh, to uh, share uh, uh, as as uh, as better the the knowledge the know-how uh, the data and uh, also the technologies that are related to the water management uh, um, 
you say that uh, uh, there is the necessity to have uh, a, a, a coordinator at the national level of the water uh, issue. Uh, I, I think that it's important, first of all, uh, to share our competence, uh, our know-how, and uh, also to give uh, each other uh, the, um, um, the, the right contribution in uh, uh, developing the strategy, the national strategy uh, that you said. So I'm very glad to, to stay here and to have uh, in this, uh, in this, um, in this uh, meeting, uh, uh, not only uh, colleagues uh, from CREA, but also from CNR, also for, uh, from INEA. Uh, because I think that uh, the, the, the uh, sharing uh, our experience uh, is the best way to uh, give uh, the right strategy and uh, the right objectives uh, in, uh, in defining the, uh, the, the sustainable use of water uh, uh, in agriculture and uh, in our uh, food system. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandra, and uh, uh, we go ahead and uh, I give the word to the uh, Vice President of uh, Utilitania, uh, Luca Dal Fabro. Uh, is there? Ecco. Thank you. Luca goes. Do you hear me? Okay. Si, si, ora ti si sente. I don't okay. know if you, see, if you see my presentation as well. Yes. Ah, fantastic. Okay. Okay, well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I heard uh, uh, the first two speeches, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, I will go straight to the point, uh, because I would like to hear especially the others' uh, intervention. So I will go directly to, um, let's say, the focus of uh, uh, what Utilitalia is trying to, to do uh, in this context. Uh, and talking about uh, the Italian issue with water uh, for the next uh, seasons, uh, we have uh, drafted uh, a, a presentation. So first of all, what is Utilitalia? Probably you might already know what Utilitalia does. Uh, we uh, serve uh, about 80% uh, um, uh, of all the water uh, distribution uh, to people, 55% uh, of the environmental services in Italy, 30% of the gas, and 15% of the energy distribution. Now, you already mentioned very well about the annual uh, rainfall. Uh, and in your slides, uh, it's clearly stated uh, what is going on by regions. Uh, in particular, in these slides, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, you can see that, uh, you know, the annual rainfall, millimeter of water uh, per year, is decreasing dramatically. And in 2022, we had uh, uh, basically one of the lowest uh, annual, annual rainfall rates. And we don't know in 2023, but it doesn't look very well. Uh, now, um, as Utilitalia and uh, with the uh, different, uh, uh, you know, members of Utilitalia, we monitor uh, the uh, depth of uh, uh, the glaciers, and uh, we have noticed uh, a decreasing in the depth of the glaciers uh, um, in uh, all the uh, Alp, uh, Alps uh, um, sectors. So there is also a shrinkage of the glaciers over the time. Uh, which of course will reduce the amount of water available during the dry season uh, uh, and this means of course uh, <clears throat> a lower level of uh, uh, reserves for the future another effect that we are monitoring is the salinization of the coastal um, especially a couple of regions in particular puglia and uh, um, the uh, romania uh, coasts uh, are affected by the fact that uh, the Mediterranean sea level is uh, increasing uh, in the last century by 14 centimeters. And this means that uh, the, salt, the salty water uh, penetrates uh, the land surface, and this means contaminates uh, uh, the 
uh, fresh water that uh, feeds uh, uh, the, um, the vegetables. Uh, and this means uh, all the food chain is at risk. Excuse me, Luca. I think there is a problem with your presentation because uh, there are several people that, that are not able to see your presentation. You see exactly why. Yeah. You see my presentation? No, me no. no. Sorry. You no. Know? Let me check. But someone is looking. I mean, you see my presentation or not? We, we, we can see the, pre the the front. Now now is good. If you are not in the presentation mode, we are able. Uh, uh, okay. if you okay, go okay. to the presentation mode uh, now you you see it or not? yeah yeah but not in the presentation mode it could be enough because it is visible it's not a problem uh, let, me size. let me check let me check if now is better now is better yeah thank you it's yes, yes no. is it better okay thank you sorry i'm not very expert on that as you might uh, have understood um well i was presenting these slides uh, but um um, I will go straight to uh, the, the salinization effect. So we are very worried about the salinization effect. And uh, because of the level of the sea that increased by 14% in the last century, uh, the salty water penetrates the land surface and the, you know, the food chain is a danger because vegetables do not have uh, you know, clean, uh, fresh water uh, to tap in. Um, some of the evidence of the uh, draft uh, is, uh, you know, the River Po, the Digal, the Molato, and in Sardinia. Um, uh, on the other side, uh, we have uh, uh, registered uh, several heavy precipitation phenomena, uh, and uh, we have uh, different type of heavy rains, triggers flooding over control in Genoa, Rome, Palermo. So to cut the story short, we have on one side, uh, you know, lack of water in the glaciers, lack of water uh, with salinization effect in the coasts. And on the other side, we have every rain. So what we say is that there is a tropicalization of the weather uh, that is going on uh, in Italy. So from a mild uh, weather to a, a, let's say, tropical weather. Now, to go to the Utilitalia AIDS proposal for adaptation, we are pushing a lot as uh, association uh, to uh, promote uh, eight, uh, let's say, key uh, activities, action, uh, promotions that we would like to, you know, to um, uh, sensitize, sensibilize all the all the institutions. So, and this covers uh, uh, the behavioral response, the infrastructural response, and the institutional response. So the first is to promote an efficient use of water resource. The second is develop uh, and building of strategic infrastructure. In Italy, we lack of uh, basic infrastructure, like uh, you know, uh, reservoirs uh, uh, in north of Italy, um, new uh, dikes, uh, new uh, pumping uh, uh, units, and so on. Uh, then we need to promote the efficient reuse. We basically waste uh, all the uh, water that is uh, um, cleaned uh, in the, uh, let's say, um, cleaning uh, plants. Uh, we don't reuse it in Italy, like in France, uh, but we send it uh, uh, to the sea. We don't collect very well uh, the water um, that falls. Only a per very small percentage of the rainfalls uh, is uh, gathered, uh, collected, uh, and reuse. Then, of course, the stop of salt wedge, which is a phenomenon that in Italy is very diffuse, and improve the water supply strategy. Uh, imagine that uh, more than 40% of all the water that we distribute as Utilitalia, we waste it in the pipes. So uh, basically half, to simplify, of the water uh, we pump in the system is lost uh, because of, uh, uh, you know, we have holes in the in the pipelines, uh, in the valves, uh, because the, the the network is very old. So we need to improve uh, the supply st strategy and, of course, uh, uh, to invest in infrastructure. Then, on the distributional response, we uh, we need to improve the governance of the river basin district, support uh, the presence of industrial company and their technologies. We need to foster the presence of uh, industry in these sectors uh, in order to allow them to invest and to innovate. 
And then, of course, also simplify the implementation of investment, just to make uh, you know um, the concept uh, clearer. Uh, the PNR foresees uh, uh, about four or five billions of investment in water. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to discharge it uh, in investments, so to carry the projects because of the authorization process. So we need to work on, on the work uh, in order to optimize, reduce the time uh, of the authorization process. Um, so this is basically you know, our recommendation, and uh, we are moving on a timeline uh, in order to basically uh, improve also uh, the, uh, the new investments that uh, we need to, uh, to discharge. Imagine that uh, the sectors annually needs about 6 billion euro, okay? Um, and in order to do that, uh, it is very important to have an authorization process for the infrastructure installation that is capable to allow uh, the operators uh, to carry out the projects. Well, thank you very much for your attention and, uh, you know, wish best for, for this workshop. Thank you. Thank you for your intervention, uh, for your speech. And uh, I leave the word to, uh, there is uh, Paola Mercogliano of the CMC. Paola, ci sei? La cerco. Uh, uh, we pass the, the other. Uh, no, Raffaella is uh, not present. Raffaella Zucchero. E Francesco Cavazza is uh, the new speaker. Go, Francesco. Hello, everyone from New York and from Italy. Thanks for the invitation and thanks to the other organizer for the event, which is very interesting. I bring the apologies of uh, Dr. Rafael Azucar, which was not able to attend today. I will try to substitute her. And bringing our experience, uh, uh, not only with climate change, but also with solution, with our responses to the crisis and how we managed uh, and we tried to manage the drought episodes of last years. But just let me introduce our reclamation and irrigation board. We managed the longest uh, irrigation infrastructure in Italy, which is located uh, in uh, the Emilia Romagna region. So northern Italy, in the Po Valley, uh, covering an irrigable area of around uh, 175,000 hectares. And thanks to uh, the major canal, which is a concrete line canal long uh, with a length of uh, 135 kilometers. So a very complex and big infrastructure and we delivered, as said before, uh, irrigation water for agriculture, which is our major water use. But we are very well characterized by a multiple, a multiple pose aim in water uses. So apart from agriculture, we distribute water for industry, civil and potable purposes, but also for environment. We maintain with our waters the river flow in some rivers in some episodes or some natural wetland uh, along the coastline. And we also carry out uh, research as we will see later in the presentation. As, as, as said before, we are in Italy, we are experiencing a very severe uh, impacts of climate change on the, on the top right of the slide, you can see that last year, uh, our main source, which was the Po River, which is the biggest river in Italy, could be walked across just without uh, any boat, but just walking because of the low levels. Last year, also, we faced not only climatic challenges, but also socioeconomic challenges, mainly due to the rising in energy costs, 
and in infrastructure maintenance due to the availability of uh, pumps, solution, workforce, and increased costs for them. This implication of climate change had uh, not only problems for directly for us, of course, directly for crop production where we could not uh, irrigate in some occasion or due to the high temperature and the heat waves, crop production was lower than expected. But we had also indirect effect in, we, in um, what is normally called the balance between uh, the nexus between water, energy, food, and environment. Since we work with water having the multi-purpose uses of it, we are very well connected with the environment. You saw before that uh, we deliver water to natural wetlands. But last year, due to the low river flows, we experienced some uh, threats of losing ecosystems in uh, the coastline due, for example, to seawater intrusion, intrusion. As said before, the saline wedge was a problem. It was also a problem for crop production and um, uh, agriculture, agriculture in general, also not only because of water scarcity, but also because of soil salinization, which is a problem. It tends to be a problem in the coastline because of seawater intrusion. But speaking of the solution of our experience, we, are, uh, we saw that our approach uh, to deal with the drought, to deal with the emergency was built upon four pillars. First of all, we deliver information about research. We carry out uh, research activities with the overall aim of saving water and reusing water to find new solutions for increased water availability. We carried out and we are continuously increasing investments in infrastructure, both for the maintenance and for the increased efficiency of them. Something we, which is very important is information provision and new pathways for energy supply. This overall aims at uh, optimizing water and energy use, which goes hand in hand, with the aim of minimizing uh, drought losses when uh, scarcity, of course, protecting the, protecting the environment and maintaining uh, energy costs as low as possible. To do so, speaking of research, we have some infrastructure. In the test, we have three major infrastructure where we carry out research, both in an experimental farm where we study new innovative solution for water saving. These solutions are then tested and showcased in a demo area where farmers and stakeholders can visit and see innovation for water saving and touch the innovation with their own hands. And finally, we manage a natural wetland where we carry out uh, investigation for boosting the ecosystem services of agriculture for the environmental protection, especially in the coastal areas to mitigate seawater intrusion effects. One big product of our research is the decision support system named IRIFRIM, which is owned by the National Association of Reclamation Board, AMBI, and managed by uh, us, Canal Emiliano Romagnolo. And it is very, very helpful in the day-to-day -day agronomic routine of farmers in the irrigation activity to save water and also to boost the food security capability. We do not have to forget that we produce food with water. So to grant food security with such platform. Of course, on the investment side, we are always studying new solution for water saving 
and for making more efficient our infrastructure management. We also seek for new water resources from the so-called unconventional sources, for example, with the use of natural-based solutions, so natural wetland for the phytoremediation of uh, uh, treated water from civil plants. We also uh, carry out a very in-depth activity for environmental monitoring, and we collect data on water resources, deliver it to some platform, and help stakeholders in the region and in Italy to manage water and to manage water scarcity thanks to such data. In here, we want to highlight how important it is to have sound and research-based decision. If we know the groundwater levels, the, the rate of seawater intrusion, we can better manage our canals, we can better manage our crop and aid the decisions for a better resilience of the whole uh, irrigation uh, infrastructure and the farming activity itself. Finally, one thing that one thing that collects all these after efforts is in water savings, both in water savings and with it uh, energy supply. We we have to remind that, that for us water pumping is a very high demanding uh, activity in terms of energy. We have an average cost, uh, historic average cost of 3.4 million euros per year, but due to the last year's uh, skyrocketing prices for the energy, we reached and uh, we more than doubled this cost and we reached 8 million. This is a problem and we also aim to produce and to find new pathways for energy supply, both to lower costs and of course, to increase our sustainability, uh, of our, the sustainability of our activity and increase with it our resilience to not only climate shocks, but also to the shocks in terms of uh, prices and uh, materials and the energy availability. And we need, and with it, I want to renovate my thanks to the, all of you and deliver again the salutes from our general director, Rafael Maducal. Thank you, Francesco. And uh, uh, Paola Mercogliano, I think it's, it's with us, but uh, we skip to in uh, another, another, another time. And then uh, I leave the, the word to Raffaella Pergamo, and then we, we come back to uh, Paola Mercogliano. Go. You are mute. No. Yes. And um, hey. about. Uh, I hear. I hear. I want to speak about uh, up strategy plan. Do you see my slide? And um, we have uh, the new Italian CAP strategic plan since uh, December 2022, and uh, differently from uh, past programs uh, in the new 2023-2027 uh, CAP implementation framework, uh, the PSP represents uh, a major element of novelty in that all the instruments uh, that can be financed through the two main uh, European funds affecting the primary sector, uh, FEAGA and FEAS uh, fall under a single common uh, programming document at the national level, outlining a national strategy for the agricultural, agri-food and the forestry sector. Uh, the architecture of rural development uh, represents another of the innovation of this programming, 
It is configured, in fact, with the strategic, uh, strategic plan of the CAP with a national type approach uh, within which are contemplated the elements of a regional time, regional specificities. Uh, the PSP represents uh, an ambitious strategy with respect to various ob objectives of uh, competitiveness, uh, environment sustainability, territorial balance, and food quality, uh, placing itself uh, in close uh, synergy with other policies that are not strictly agricultural, uh, which uh, nevertheless uh, reinforce its scope and uh, effectiveness from uh, PNRR to cohesion policy. Overall, um, the PSP provides 173 interventions, including those activated under sectoral interventions, and uh, a financial envelope of nearly 36 billion euros in total for the period 23, 2023 to 2027. The theme of uh, water protection is therefore included in the CAP strategic plan by responding through the elements of green architecture uh, to specific needs identified for strategic objective five, uh, fostering sustainable development and efficiency resource management, which relate to both quantity, efficient and sustainable use of water resource in agriculture and quality, uh, protecting surface and deep waters <clears throat> from pollution. <clears throat> Sustainable management of water resource goes through pollution, uh, polluting inputs reduction, natural water re retention measure with sustainable cultivation methods commitments, and the forest sustainable man management commitments and reforestation investments. The environmental enhancement of the irrigation infrastructure um, also falls under sustainable water management. And finally, sustainable irrigation management is um, addressed through four types of action, advisory services, irrigation advisory services, adoption and precision irrigation, investment for irrigation network efficiency improve, uh, investments for uh, irrigation efficiency improve at field scale creation and the restoration of the reservoir and reuse of wastewater. Uh, in this slide, we can see agroclimatic uh, actions, compensatory payments and investments are the macro action under which water resource specific measure fall with 18% of the PSP budget and 42% of rural development budget. Going into the details of specific intervention for sustainable irrigation management, the PSP includes agroclimatic and environmental commitments for the adoption of irrigation advisory systems and precision agriculture. In addition, some PSP interventions support investments to increase irrigation efficiency, both at the farm scale uh, through conversation, through conversions, uh, sorry, of irrigation systems, and uh, at the off-farm scale, interventions to modernize the irrigation network, as well as the construction or rehabilitation of reservoirs and wastewater reuse systems. Uh, all these um, main action uh, with um, seven percent of rural development budget. And uh, finally, from the graph, we can see that all regions in Italy uh, have activated at least one intervention that relates to irrigation. Most regions have interventions that support irrigation investment at the farm scale with the color green and purple, and the off farm scale with the color orange and light blue. In addition, several regions for, uh, have activated agri-environmental commitments from, for the adoption of irrigation advisory methods, color red, and the precision agriculture system, which uh, includes precision irrigation color blue. Thank you for listening, and that's all. Thank you, Rafael. And uh, I think that Paola Mercogliano is here. Uh, are you ready, Paola? Yes, yes, ready. OK, Paola goes. OK, I'm sharing the slide okay can you see my slide okay okay 
Thank you. Um, uh, nice to, to be here. I'm Paola Mercoiano from the CMCC Foundation, the Mediterranean Center on Climate Change. Uh, our institution has the main goal to provide information to private and public users about the expected future of climate change in a so complex context like the Mediterranean one. And you know that this area is expected to be uh, as a hotspot of the climate change. And, and uh, I will say that also, if you if we look at uh, historical data, we know already that a lot of uh, um, other, a lot of impact are already present due to the climate change. I want to briefly starting from what was expected uh, as a main impact of climate change over the Mediterranean area. Uh, coming from the result of a report provided by European agency in 2016. Um, it was expected that uh, among the impact of climate change on the Mediterranean area, there was the reduced water availability, the increased drought, the severe loss of biodiversity, increased of forest fires, the reduced summer tourism due to the very high temperature that we are facing, and also an increased health impact of the heat of the heat waves. And, uh, and also we have to say that currently we already are, um, are having uh, this kind of uh, events. Uh, the increase of the frequency of uh, this event is already evident. We are having also evident, um, evident observation about the expansion of the habitat for uh, disease vectors. And also is expected the reduced hydropower energy and the reduction of agricultural areas. And if we look at very detailed studies, so we can see that this is also related to the availability of, of water um, over the Mediterranean area. All these main impacts were also reported recently in the work of the IPCC that mainly looking at the new a result of the climate scenarios uh, from uh, um, R6, from CMIP6, sorry, um, also gave the evidence that uh, the same uh, risk associated to water scarcity are expected to, to be present over this area. Then I want to emphasize that uh, from uh, about 10 years, we are already, I mean, aware that uh, a, a water scarcity is expected over this, uh, over this area. If we look at the recent past, these are data coming from an analysis of Copernicus data set, era five reanalysis. We, uh, we tried to build, uh, the, to understand the, the, the drought, the, the drought that affected Italy during the last year, but it is also present, ongoing is in 2023. And then thanks to the reanalysis, we can see in this picture that still from January, this area where the pixels are red represent an area where the, the, these indicators, the standard precipitation index evaluated on a six month scale, gave us an idea of where the drought is very extreme. Then, as you can see, this drought started the last year, but I, I, I mentioned, already mentioned that also during this year, we are having more or less the same pattern. We start to have this um, water scarcity starting from the north part of Italy, still during winter uh, period, and then um, uh, during the, the years, we, this uh, water scarcity affected also the other part of, the, of Italy. And, um, and of course, is uh, still on, is uh, um, also the impact are very relevant on agriculture, uh, agriculture, but also on uh, industrial um, sectors. Uh, and also, of course, there are also many indirect impacts on the on the health, uh, on the quantity and the water quality, and uh, and and so on, and also on the and energy. Uh, related to the impact on the other power sectors. So this is what uh, we are observing. This is what we are facing now. Um, coming from the new 
scenarios of, uh, from IR6, here is reported the expected uh, increase of temperature in the next year. Um, here you can see that, uh, as I mentioned before, Italy is a not, Italy as a part of the Mediterranean area is an area of the hot spot of the climate change. Then a very high, then a very high increase are expected in the in the in the in the next months. Also, if we consider the more optimistic uh, scenario, considering the precipitation, we, if you look at the precipitation anomaly, this gives you an idea of the complexity of this area. Because if we look at this picture, um, uh, due to the due to the fact that during the, the different season in Italy, we have a high area in Italy where the pattern of precipitation can be at the seasonal level very different. For example, in the northern Italy is expected an increase of the seasonal temperature, while during summer is expected a strong decrease. And while in the southern of Italy is, expecting, uh, is expected along all the year a decrease. But of course, if you put all together, looking at the uh, um, amount of precipitation at the yearly level, this seems to disappear, but this is uh, only due to the, um, to the fact that perhaps uh, if we are interested to have information of the specific uh, pattern that will have these indicators of the precipitation or of the not precipitation of waters of precipitation scarcity, we don't need to look at all the national details, but we need to make our analysis at a very local level. And for this reason, also when we define the adaptation strategies related to the scarcity of the water, we need really to work at the local level because the pattern that we have could be very different due to the complex complexity of the Italian area where we have mountain, coastal, um, coastal, uh, coastal area, mountain area, the complexity, we have the Alpine, but also we, have, we are in the Mediterranean um, contest. If we look not at precipitation, but at a very specific climate indicators, here in this, in this picture, you can see that there is a a strong, um, a strong um, sensitivity to the climate scenarios that we consider. If uh, in case of the more optimistic uh, scenario, we have uh, an, uh, an agricultural drought is expected to increase from 15% up to 35%. And also for the hydrological drought, more or less, we have the same percentage of increase of the drought. And also in terms of frequency, uh, we have uh, a different, uh, of in, 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 uh, uh, depending, um, depending from the scenario, we don't have change in the, scene, in the sign of the variation. It's expected that there is an increase of the, of the drought also if we will be able to realize the more optimistic scenario. And then this is something that we need to carefully consider when we define the adaptation. And the, but also we need to uh, emphasize the relevance of the mitigation action because if we realize the more optimistic scenario of warming, we will have an increase of the doubt of 35%. That of course is very high but is it something that perhaps we can manage better with respect to have an impact, uh, to have a variation of the drought, of, of the frequency drought of 74%, that is very high variation to be, uh, to be managed. Um, but uh, as I mentioned before, in the Italian context is very, very complex. Then we cannot uh, use uh, um, uh, GOBA scenario if we want to evaluate the impact. We need to, to use a more detailed analysis to, have, uh, to support the action and the, the planning of the adaptation in area area. If we look at the Eurocordex data, Eurocordex program is a part of the global program Cordex, um, where we have a lot of uh, uh, climate projection at very high resolution, 12 kilometers. And um, thanks to this uh, uh, database, thanks to this data set of uh, uh, simulation, we are able to evaluate uh, in, a in an accurate way, um, mainly due to the fact that we are able to evaluate the answer 
ensemble mean of these different models, but also the uncertainty associated to uh, these um, uh, um, to these uh, scenarios. And we uh, we were able as a CMCC to support, for example, the National Adaptation Plan to Climate Change, but also to support many other documented strategy at local um, and uh, regional level. Um, thanks to the availability of this kind of data. Then I want to emphasize that it's very, very relevant to have the availability of a very high resolution projection, but also of a monitoring system that gave us the opportunity to define a very good uh, um, climate projection. Here, you can see the class of the extreme, the, of the extreme drought for short term uh, drought, uh, working on three months period. As you can see, it's clearly and evident that we have an increase uh, in the in the period uh, of the 30 year period uh, centered on 2050 of the extreme class that in an increase of the drought class especially for rcp 8.5 rcp is the scenario where we have a, a higher high higher um, highest uh, emission and uh, the, the, the variation is expected to be 5% respect to a reference period that is um, in 2081-2010. Uh, this was a picture provided for the National Adaptation Plan. And then you can see that if we consider the RCP 2.6 and RCP 4.5, that are more um, optimistic, uh, in RCP 4.5 is a, an intermediate scenario, you can see that the variation is uh, uh, more uh, limited, uh, but you have to consider that the, in the picture I reported only the extreme doubt class, then this is uh, um, uh, the, the, the class uh, where, the, where the, 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 the class of do you consider the extreme drought event? But you can see that also the uncertainty is quite uh, low. Then the signal of the increase of the drought is also confirmed in the next future by this kind of uh, scenarios. Uh, this is the same picture for the, the for the medium, sorry, term drought that is evaluated of a six month period. And also in this case, you can see that there is a a change of the of the um, of the increase there is an increase of the variation up to eight percent and mainly uh, the area where we have the higher the highest value is in the southern of, of Italy that is already affected by drought and then this is all to be considered because when we uh, when we evaluate the anomaly of course we are we are comparing the future with respect to the reference period where these uh, where there where there is already a, a water uh, a water uh, scarcity to be uh, to be considered to be included in the analysis this is a, a very detailed studies studies that uh, study that we provided over the Po River Basin. The Po River Basin is a very uh, relevant for Italy because there are a lot of um, um, economical sector uh, working with, uh, um, uh, with the water provided by the Po River. And uh, in this uh, study that was uh, published in 2015, we uh, we already were able to um, link to put together climate scenarios and hydrological and hydraulic water, and uh, the, the, we we spent a lot of uh, we used our supercomputer center because this was a, a very uh, computational high cost high demanding cost simulation and uh, here we were able to uh, to show that uh, is expect was expected in the future to have uh, a change in the pattern uh, of the water availability over the Po river basin and uh, specifically in both the scenarios that were considered was considered were considered in this study um, we have a strong increase of low flow day from june to october and uh, an increase from November to January. And uh, we think that this, cast, this uh, kind of studies can be very relevant to support uh, adaptation uh, um, in, the next, um, in, in the next year. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Paola. No continues from uh, the future, I think. Uh, <laughs> we, we hope that uh, 
men, uh, people do investment on infrastructures in order to tackle the, these uh, future trends. And we, we, I will leave the word to Rudy Rossetto that uh, we talk about. Good afternoon, everybody. I will. Or oh, good morning, if you are in the US. Yeah. And yes, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Here we go. Rudy, you are you have uh, your microphone stopped. Rudy. Here I am. Ah, okay, it's okay. Yeah, now. I'm sorry, but uh, I was oh. sent out twice. So, go ahead. Okay, I think you can see my screen now. Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, uh, I will give you uh, a sh very short presentation on managed aquifer recharge as a solution to adapt to, to climate change. Uh, we talk about uh, adaptation, which in the, in the end is how to anticipate the adverse uh, effects of climate change and acting to prevent or to minimize damages. Uh, mitigation, of course, is the, is the most important options, option for climate change, but uh, climate will be continued to be altered as a result of emissions already in the atmosphere. So we have uh, a strong need to, to adapt. When we talk about uh, uh, facing uh, water scarcity, uh, we need to, to go back to uh, the division we have between conventional versus non-conventional water resources. That is, how do we plan to, to, to find the water we need by uh, deeper aquifer exploitations, or we want to build new dams, or we may have a further option, which is that of uh, uh, going into non-conventional, into the use of non-conventional water resources. And we have uh, three main techniques. One is water banking. The other is the reuse of treated wastewater. And third one is desalination. I will talk about water banking today. <clears throat> water banking is related to the conservation of uh, water in the undergrounds, specifically in time when this water is available. That is, is a prevention measure. You cannot use this technique when you are in the middle of a drought. Yeah, and the scope is to protect and to prepare water resources against drought, increasing demand and uncertainties posed by uh, the changing climate. Yeah, this is uh, taken from uh, down under people from Australia, yeah, where we were, they were saying that traditionally they rely on dams, but now that they have to adapt to changing climate, they have also to store water underground. And when we talk about water banking, we talk about intentional recharge of an aquifer. That is when we uh, design and set in operation and managed aquifer recharge schemes, 
We intentionally increase the volume ordinarily stored underground at the soil surface. And the techniques we, we use are basically nature-based solutions because they mimic enhance natural processes. Uh, we call it intentional in order to assure an adequate protection uh, on the, the humans and the environment. It's not really something new because it's, it dates back to uh, 150 years ago and uh, in Italy it was already mentioned in one of the first uh, engineering geology uh, books from uh, the engineer Mario Cannavari in 1927. It's developed from the 1950. Uh, uh, when we talk about the managed aquifer recharge scheme, we talk about the geoengineered scheme and the potential use and objective this, of this intentional recharge are those of increasing groundwater availability, uh, compensate diminishing recharge, replenish aquifers against overdraft, control subsidence phenomena, combat seawater intrusion, and uh, so on. What do we need to build a managed aquifer recharge scheme? Basically, we need three components. A source of water to recharge the aquifer and a recharge technique. Then we may have some other uh, uh, elements like a pumping system or treatment for uh, uh, before we charge or after we pump the water for various uses. There are several types of, of recharge. These images are taken from Australian guidelines for water recycling, which so far are the best uh, uh, guidelines for setting in operation managed aquifer recharge schemes. The most famous maybe is, uh, is aquifer storage and recovery, but we have also dry wells, infiltration basin, induced riverbank filtration, dune filtration, which is very popular in, in um, the Netherlands, soil aquifer treatment schemes, which accounts for the larger MAR scheme in Israel uh, for about 150 million cubic meter per, per year. Uh, which is the situation in Italy? Uh, in Italy, there are very few schemes operating under the legal requirements of the ministerial decree 100 2016 and basically uh, uh, there are two infiltration basin one is in Emilia Romagna in, in the Rimini area and one is in Tuscany in the Livorno province in Italy these techniques uh, start to to to, to take steps uh, uh, deeply about 10 years ago with some projects financed. Uh, they were run mostly in Northern Italy, in Veneto, and they were Trust, Aqua, Warbo, and they brought to the first test of infiltration fields, or a nice idea that is the one of forest infiltration areas that was started by uh, Veneto Agriculture. In Tuscany, we have been designing and setting in operation since about five years uh, the Life Free Water Mar Plan in Sovereto, which was uh, funded partly by the European Commission, is a two stage infiltration basin, which in its first phase uh, saw uh, the possibility to recharge from 300,000 to 1 million cubic meter per year. It's a nature based solution, its cost is of about 300,000. Uh, euros and the from the initial design to operation it took 24 months basically uh, it's also completely automated and uh, it has the medal of behind the the, the most automated mars scheme at the global at the global level basically what we do we divert uh, 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 water from the river cornea when the river flow is above the minimum uh, uh, ecological flow. And uh, thanks to a pump and to a field spectrometer that controls the quality, the water is then diverted in the first basin, which is the decantation pond. And uh, from the decantation pond, the water is uh, sent to this basin, which is the through infiltration basin. 
And this is an image from initial uh, uh, infiltration uh, uh, moment from the start of operation. And this is how the basin looks like in, in uh, uh, full operation. It looks like a lake, but while it looks like a lake, at this moment is infiltrating 60 liters per second. Uh, lately, in one month, thanks to the uh, Protezione Civile fundings against the drought, of 2022, we have enlarged the scheme to a full capacity of 2 million cubic meter. And this was uh, started just last week with all the authorities there. So Mar or something else. Uh, I'm not going to say that this is the best solution. Yeah, I'm, I'm just telling you that uh, a managed aquifer recharge is one of the tools for water management and planning. And when deciding for a solution, cost benefits, water works value, efficiency should be thoroughly evaluated. And viability studies should be done before deciding for desalination, use of reclaimed waste water, mar dams. While at present, it's very strong, the pressure exerted by lobbies. This is not a good way to, to perform a sustainable water resource management. You cannot say we go for this or that without having a, 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 a viability uh, study, proper viability study. W what are the advantages of this uh, solution? Uh, low investment cost. In example, I show you, we are now with a new, uh, with a new setting to a cost of about 400,000 uh, euros. A dam of about 2 million uh, cubic meter storage per year will cost something between 10 to 20 million euros. So you can easily calculate the difference. Uh, it's easy to identify sites and you have no or minimal land loss while you have increasing of uh, uh, ecological value of areas. I'm going to my conclusion, and uh, there are some buts. For the implementation of managed aquifer recharge schemes, we need careful planning and clear and sounding regulation, coordinated investments, monitoring of operation, and creation of managerial skills. And the environmental, energy, health, and other consequences must be uh, duly considered while defining the potential and limitation of these options. I think I'm finished. Thank you for listening. I will stay some more, Mauro, but then at uh, quarter to five, I need to go for uh, lectures. So I'm sorry okay. I cannot stay to the end of the event today. Okay, thank you very Thank uh, Rudy. It's always a very interesting, this uh, technique, this uh, way to accumulate water and uh, it's interesting that uh, to put at uh, evaluation the several way in which we can accumulate or uh, save uh, water and other things that so evaluation cost benefit uh, uh, analysis is one of this uh, evaluation it is very important to 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 make it uh, when we go uh, to to make some investment in infrastructure. Thank you. Uh, now, Emanuele Romano, CNR. Cosa uh, Romano? Can you hear me? Sì, ok. Ok. Uh, so, the, this presentation is focused on the role of the scientific institution and from the Water Research Institute of the National Research Council. And um, our uh, work is uh, on the one side uh, on um, research, uh, uh, theoretics research, but also uh, to support uh, uh, the um, uh, hydrographic districts, uh, in particular the observatories, uh, uh, in their uh, um, works. So, 
in my sorry okay so uh this uh, uh slide just introduce uh, uh what's in my opinion is one of the main uh, um uh, research question uh the colleague from the uh, cmc uh, see uh, show a similar um, slide uh, when she mentioned the need to have a, sh a modeling chain from the <laughs> climate material and climate data, hydrology and hydrogeology modeling to water supply systems and uh, I'm adding also ecosystems modeling. Because the problem is that, uh, in my opinion, we are able to uh, represent somehow the uh, situation in terms of indexes. Uh, I uh, reported here uh, some of the uh, most common indexes to represent the situation in terms of uh, precipitation, in terms of uh, um, uh, water resources, uh, and also in terms of uh, uh, the um, uh, ability of a system to meet uh, the water needs. But the problem uh, is uh, to uh, link the different indexes each other. So to quantify these links, uh, a uh, reduction of precipitation of 30%, for example, what does it mean in terms of uh, uh, resources? What does it mean in terms of uh, ability of a system to meet the water needs? And uh, in this case, I think we need uh, for a shared modeling chain where the shade is among all the, uh, the um, stakeholders that uh, um, address their own needs uh, on the same resources or on the same um, uh, resources, I, I mean, uh, several resources. So the problem is uh, uh, to move from the meteorological drought to the socioeconomical drought. Uh, and we need models to capture the nonlinearities. Uh, this is, uh, in my opinion, is a big problem, and I think that the contribution of the science should be addressed in uh, in this direction. And I will mention briefly uh, some uh, uh, key points. <laughs> the first one uh, is the uh, assessment of the snow water equivalent, in particular. Uh, I'm referring to the fact that the seasonal snow line is increasing in level and uh, the snow packet is ex expected to decrease. So we can have a significant variation of the hydrological and other geological uh, regime. This point uh, is not, I mean, uh, in, 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 uh, in qualitative terms uh, is uh, well known, but uh, we are still not able to quantify how and how much the uh, variation that the seasonal snow line is affecting and will affect the uh, hydrological regime, both in terms of uh, um, seasonal variation and uh, in terms of uh, uh, interannual variation. Uh, second point, the secondary impacts. Uh, I'm referring uh, uh, to, to describe uh, this uh, this point uh, to a uh, case study that uh, um, we use as an example for a publication in uh, 2016. So the Kito Reservoir. Uh, the problem is uh, related to the <clears throat> increasing uh, water demand due to climate change and to the increase of temperature and decreasing of precipitation because uh, these uh, kind of impacts are absolutely not linear. A decrease uh, of uh, uh, n% in terms of uh, uh, precipitation uh, can result in uh, a much uh, larger increase in water needs. So, uh, the, uh, the in some cases uh, uh, the secondary impacts can be 
<laughs> larger than the primary impacts on the water resources itself. Uh, I think that uh, in uh, the research in this case uh, uh, is um, still uh, uh, not able to uh, address this point. Third point, the infiltration processes. Uh, I'm uh, referring here uh, to the Petrignano d'Assisi Aquifer, but just an ex as a, an example. And I'm referring uh, to the variation of the time lag, uh, I mean, uh, of the uh, time lag between uh, the, the precipitation, let's say, and the uh, recharge to, to the aquifer. Uh, if we consider uh, dry and hot scenarios for the next future, uh, we can have a, a significant variation in the time lag. This means that uh, um, the um, um, not the reliability, sorry, yeah, I don't remember the term in English, the ability of the aquifer to recover after a drought episode can uh, um, be reduced in terms of uh, time necessary to have impact on the aquifer after the recovery of the precipitation. Fourth point, the impacts on the ecosystem services. I think that uh, this point uh, uh, is usually neglected uh, or not uh, sufficiently considered. But in my opinion, uh, on, on uh, a medium horizon uh, is very, very important because uh, the risk is that uh, in a uh, uh, few decades, 20 years, 30 years, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, see a, a very important degradation on the ecosystem services that in some cases are uh, still ongoing, ongoing right now. So uh, to come back to the starting point, so the management, early warning and emergency and planning in case of drought. Uh, as I said before, uh, we need for a shared modeling chain, but the problem is uh, uh, that we, one of the problem, uh, it was mentioned also by Mauro at the very beginning, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, actors. I mentioned some here. So what's the role of the research institution? Uh, the problem is the research institutions are usually providers of not organized knowledges except for the APCC, but uh, the APCC act uh, at, uh, at a global uh, level. And the policymakers uh, and water managers, uh, even if are quite fragmented, need for organized information. So in this case, uh, what we have to do as a scientific community to support uh, or to provide consultancy specific for uh, um, uh, local problems. Uh, it's a, a, a question that I uh, leave to you completely open. I don't have uh, uh, answers, but uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the, the research community should uh, um, ask herself to uh, understand uh, which is really the role of the say, scientific community in the Italian context. And uh, from my side, that's all, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Emanuele Romano, that uh, concluded your uh, speech in a very interesting way. Uh, the problem uh, of uh, governance of uh, to manage the problem, to tackle the problem of the scarcity of water, is not only one problem of money, or technique, or technology, but also of governance. We have to governance the different subject, the different institution. 
it's, it's a problem. It's a problem of nowadays. Uh, well, uh, Fernando Nardi is here. Eccolo. Yes, Mauro and everyone, good afternoon. And thanks for the invitation. Really interesting talk I've been following since the start. I will just go to my presentation, if you agree, Mauro, so that we move ahead uh, so that for the sake of time. Do you see my screen? It's okay. Do you hear me and see, see my screen? Okay. So, uh, uh, I, following the agenda, also we discussed about organization. I, I decided to share with you this topic that is uh, one of the pieces of the problem, and also uh, um, my opinion. And also, I'm presenting a project with different partners. So, our opinion is also part of the solution. As you can see from the title, we're talking about transdisciplinarity. That means not only multiple scientific disciplines, but also the link with the society, the stakeholders. So like we go there all here for like citizen. And we need to uh, have uh, more interactive actions between uh, the, the, the scientific and professional components uh, and also the on ground. Uh, uh, needs, the issues, and also the behavior of the, the, the stakeholders and the citizens. So, um, we're in the slide. Um, I'm, I'm a hydrologist, I'm a hydraulic engineer hydrologist uh, by background. Uh, I'm the director of the Water of Water Center in uh, University of Friends of Perugia. And what I'm presenting today it's a prima uh, funded project on the web and nexus It's called nexusness and i'm you know proud to be the coordinator of this uh, three years project funded by prima i do need to introduce what prima is and some uh, international cooperation actions because the previous colleagues uh, already mentioned uh, the prima program about mainstreaming and uh, achieving water and food security in the mediterranean region and uh, one of the topic uh, of the Prima mission is the WEF and Nexus. So what is the WEF and Nexus? Uh, what, what I said before, uh, that we have uh, uh, together in this topic, the problem and uh, hopefully the solution. WEF and Nexus is the four components, water, energy, food, ecosystem, that uh, at the moment, uh, this is part of the problem, uh, um, historically, socially, and technically, have been managed as a, with a, what we call silo effect as different components. This was uh, given by the, the need of establishing policies for managing complex uh, ecosystem components. So that, as you, as we know, the, there is like water management with the sector, with the professionals, and and and. Uh, and a chain of uh, uh, guidelines procedure that go in one line. The, the energy sector goes uh, eventually in another line. The food production you know, from crops, agricultural system, the food supply chain uh, uh, have uh, uh, other comp sectorial components uh, and the environment. Uh, of course, in, in, the, in, a, you know, in many policies, in many, in, in many guidelines that uh, there are uh, interlinks. But what we are experiencing in the last few years, especially when facing complex challenges, the topic of today, droughts, floods, climate change, of course, and all the, not only the biophysical change in dynamics, but also change in society, and what, we, uh, what I like to call shocks, stressors. So the droughts we have been experiencing in Italy is a shock expected unexpected you know uh, also previous colleagues on climate change component you know it's very complex but these shocks are, are diverse let's also imagine the shocks on the energy topic uh, by the ukraine war so th these shocks uh, uh, are and will be always more and more impacting our lives so the, the web and nexus topic uh, has the goal of uh, finding a way so that the four components, uh, water, energy, food, ecosystem, 
are managed uh, in the, without a seal effect you know, component in which the policies don't overlap and there are synergies for, say, uh, for fair and safe allocation of the natural resources. So as you can see here, I, I will now go to the points. I have a few slides I'm presenting here from the Nexus project uh, that I decided to share with you today at the concept level. The project is ongoing. We are in the middle of the project uh, after little less than two years of work. So hopefully in the future, we'll see each other again and share the results of the project. At the concept level, what you see here, what we are trying to achieve. Some of us, you know, water people are uh, confident and they, they are aware of water management plants. We are, we are putting together WEF and Exos management plants in, in which mean the zoning, the, the, the stressors, uh, the actions for mitigating a nuisance effect of climate change and other natural disasters uh, are, are, are included in a system which the four components uh, uh, goes together. Go together. So basically, again, no time into technicalities. Uh, that these complex schematics uh, that is uh, at the scientific point of view is showing something. From the left, from global scale, the, the Euromed scales we have to the to the regional scales, we had uh, we have um, uh, consolidated science. The WEF and Exos topic. Let me add some you know background components. The WEF and Exos topic has been. Uh, is not new to science. Uh, uh, and this project is an innovation action. We are transferring science into opera operations. We are, we are transferring re research that was already done. Glad also that Rudy Rossetto, probably he left now, he was before me, is one of the partners. And the, the free world model is the, one of the model uh, supporting the, the managed aquifer recharge projects in Toscany. Toscany is one of our case studies. So what needs from Politecnico Milan? Sorry, I don't want to mention the other partners. Don't, don't blame me also if someone's listening from the other project partners, uh, team members. I want to say that on the left side of this plot, you see like complex science, a WEF and Exus model, linking hydrological modeling, ecosystem modeling, and other uh, WEF related models that need to go, this kind of fund that you see in the middle, they need to go into Nexus ecosystem labs, we call them living labs, you know, real case studies in which we are not only providing studies, but we're working with stakeholders in the living labs. And add also the very important, the green schematic, socioeconomic part. There is no way of having a solution without uh, uh, thinking and including the social, economic, uh, and environmental component also in quantitative terms. The willingness to pay, who's gonna pay for this? Is a top-down approach with incentives, or is a bottom-up approach in which people was gonna change behavior? These are the questions that are um, you know, addressing in Nexusness. Is exceeded the international consortium partners, some of them I mentioned before. Um, and we have in these four Nexus ecosystem labs, very diverse from Italy, Tuscany I mentioned, to Spain, the Duero Basin, and, and, and this is a Mediterranean international cooperation project. Uh, so we have Tunisia, we have Egypt, and I'm putting the focus now, again, what I said, on the need as part of the solution to engage stakeholder, to engage citizen. It's not only an awareness campaign, it's not education. The issues we are facing, like the droughts, again, let me repeat the topic of the workshop today, are co-identified with the stakeholders. They're gonna tell us what they need. And you see some schematic about this innovation ecosystem approach and the fact that we need to work a lot because when you go to the stakeholders in Tunisia and Egypt, uh, we, need, we need to produce uh, material in Arabic, okay? And this is a complex interact, interactive project that we're dealing with. And, and, um, and um, again, what I said in terms of practical examples and I will finish my talk to, to be in time, um, the, the, the issues. If there is a, a, a stakeholder we, willing to increase 20% tomato production, we, go, we need to calculate the interlinked effects on the water system, on the energy system, because you know, as you know, the moving water requires pumping system like the previous colleague from this, the chair said, and the increased cost of electricity, 50% average in Italy, who's gonna pay for this? How do we manage this? These are the issues we are facing. And again, stressing a lot, the prima mission and a nexus and mission, not only of the interlinked uh, WEF components, water, energy, food, and ecosystem, what is called the community of practice. 
stakeholders and citizens getting together with scientists, professional uh, companies uh, to um, manage and to transition to new system in, in which policies, guidelines, and management plans are the you know for natural resources uh, are managed without silo effect, you know, with cross sectorial work. These are our website the links, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Fernando Nardi. Uh, we are, we go ahead, and uh, now the the couple Ferrigno and Manganiello of uh, CREA uh, that uh, talk about uh, database and the uh, use of uh, this database of uh, CREA. Both. We don't hear, we don't hear. Now? Now you can hear me? Okay, it's okay. okay. <laughs> so, hi, um, uh, good morning to everyone. I introduce me. I am Mariana Ferrigno. I'm a researcher of uh, CREA PB, the research center that uh, Alessandro Pesce uh, uh, already presented before. Um, I'm involved in research on uh, water policies and uh, water use in agriculture. Um, in, uh, in the climate scenario, we see, uh, we see um, uh, today, uh, we, 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 we know that uh, the agricultural sector must integrate the policy for efficient use of water in our um, in a more comprehensive strategies for adaptive to climate change. And in this process, the, the, the use of shared information can help to, um, to, to define needs and to direct and coordinate policies. The SIGRAN and ANIA databases of CREAPB can support this process. As we know, um, strategies, uh, uh, for uh, um, adapt, uh, um, adapting to climate change uh, and preventing water scarcity include different measures. Uh, previous speaker uh, already talked about uh, potential infrastructural action to, to cope with water scarcity from downstream, uh, from upstream to downstream, and it's necessary to incre increase water av availability, improve water use efficiency, and to um, and to save water in the soil and in uh, in groundwater. Um, in the in the in the, over the last few years, CREPB um, developed on behalf of Ministry of uh, Agriculture, Italian Ministry of Agriculture, two different digital information system uh, to support integrated uh, management of, of information on water. Uh, uh, for agriculture and um, and to share this information uh, useful to define sensitive areas and intervention priorities to plan measure the most effective effective and useful measure uh, in a given uh, area to spend better the, the um, um, uh, uh, financial resources to quickly implement the intervention plans and to estimate ex ante and monitor ex post effectiveness of these actions in terms of expected results. Uh, they refer to collective irrigation, mainly to collective irrigation uh, provided by local agencies for water management that in general, but, but not only, are reclamation and irrigation boards. Uh, SIGRIAN is uh, um, the, the national information system for the management of water resources in agriculture and in, is a web GIS platform providing an overview of the Italian irrigation system. It is available online for planner, uh, planners of Italian irrigation system, such as ministries, regions, uh, river-based district authorities, uh, and uh, loans, and um, we, here you can see the, 
the homepage of the website. CCRIAN collects information, uh, management, infrastructure, infrastructural and uh, agronomic information about more than 600 loans and uh, uh, contain data about water supply points and related to water bodies, amount of granting them withdrawn water uh, from uh, for about irrigation districts with related irrigable and irrigated area, uh, prevailing on farm irrigation systems, uh, irrigated crop and uh, amount of used water, and uh, even information about off-farm distribution network. And finally, it contains even self-supplying irrigation data. Uh, besides providing information on uh, water used in agriculture, it can help to uh, um, assess the efficiency of the irrigation network and to define priori priority of intervention to improve this efficiency. Um, according to guidelines uh, for the quantification of water for agriculture approved by Italian Ministry, Ministry of Agriculture in 2015, CICRIAN is the system to which all the irrigation entities uh, must transmit in a um, in um, a measured or estimated wa uh, water volumes uh, referred to collected or sub-supply irrigation, withdrawn, used, and returned to the uh, natural uh, flow. Guidelines also deserve to, uh, to drive the setting of water pricing policies at national level in compliance with European uh, water framework directive. Here you can see uh, a detailed scheme of guidelines content. DANIA is uh, the na national database of investment for irrigation and environment born in 2018 uh, to collect uh, information on project implemented by LOM, both planned and funded, um, for irrigation purpose or for protection from hydrogeological hazard. DANIA 2 is available online. Uh, this is the home page of the web website uh, to authorize the members of region ministries, uh, research center, river basin district authorities, so that the irrigation and irrigation board can update project information about their infrastructural needs and share this information with the national and regional authorities competent for the programming and funding of these projects. Uh, the information contained in DANIA uh, allows to catalog each project uh, from a technical, financial, and environmental point of view, according to their uh, type and purpose, to the vulnerability of the intervention area to drought and uh, desertification, uh, to the status, the, the environmental status of water body interested by the project, and uh, um, about the results, according to the results then, that can be achieved from the project, uh, for example, in terms of water saving. This parameter uh, can be used both in programming phase and in the monitoring phase of the funding project. Uh, here we can see uh, the, count, the currently consistency of the uh, DANIA data that actually uh, currently contains inform uh, about 2,600 projects in charge of uh, more than 200 uh, um, irrigation boards uh, and uh, the, um, of the 23 billion euros of total amount of project, 89% is referred to irrigation uh, projects. Um, the sharing of data of these two databases between different institutions uh, make it possible a coordination of information and then a, a common base of information that can be analyzed and used in different phases of planning and implementing policies and at a different territorial level. For example, uh, in defining uh, needs of, uh, um, of measure of SIGRAN uh, um, data can contribute to draw up the drought management plans at uh, irrigation district level. As for example, you can, we can see in the guidelines uh, approved by Eastern Alps River Basin District. At regional level, um, the SIGRAN information 
can help to characterize the regional irrigation context and the consequent infrastructural needs as um, we can see in a recent study uh, of the uh, Veneto region uh, that have, um, which reports an analysis of the basin in which to accumulate water resources for irrigation based on the, um, the description of the uh, irrig regional irrig irrigation context based on Sigrian data, based on Sigrian data. And um, at river basin district level, uh, the information about the, um, the description, uh, the irrigation uh, context uh, can be used, have been used uh, to, um, to the update of uh, river basin management plans for the third programming cycle of the water management of the water frame framework directive uh, in relation to use of water for agriculture. Um, finally, at national level, uh, it can be uh, used to detail the context indicator of the, uh, the CAP strategic plan. Um, in support of the programming of policies, uh, Dani and Sigrian contributed to the design of the um, Italian National Recovery and Resilience Plan measure referred to the financing of, to, of collective irrigation, in, irrigation network. And in particular, in defining the, per, the two performance indicator of the measure and related value of baseline and target achievable. In particular, the reference element of the two performance indicator um, were identified with Sigran information in, in, such as um, irrigable area and water supply point. Uh, the, Dania, um, Sigran and Dania together help to quantify the baseline value of these two parameters. Um, with Dania uh, in project, uh, the Dania information about uh, funded project in, um, made possible to carry out statistic on the result of intervention per, uni per unit of expenditure. Uh, joining this in all this information, it was possible to calculate the target achievable by the measure based on the available uh, budget. Um, even in the, in, the, in the implementation of the same measure, Dania was also the instrument through which the intervention were submitted by irrigation board and selected by Ministry, by ministry of Agriculture. Uh, more in detail, um, irrigation board uh, have entered the project in Dania, declaring their willingness to apply for funding, and then uh, eligibility and selection criteria were defined and uh, automatically applied um, to select this project basing on the information collected in Dania. Thus, allowed to reduce uh, uh, the selection times. Um, a special section of Dania data uh, can be used to quantify output indicators useful for monitoring the performance of a single plan or policies. An example is what has been done um, uh, in the for the strategic environmental assessment of the National Rural Development Program. Uh, here we can see some indicators and related value um, by river basin district, uh, but the same uh, ev evaluation is possible at regional level at, at a single uh, project level. Finally, uh, beyond their own application, the combined use of the two databases made it possible to set up at national level a reward system for access to funding. In particular, um, to promote the quantification of water volume in irrigation, Ministry of Agriculture imposed the compliance with the use of Sigrian by Irrigation Board as a precondition for financing in some of its public investment program, um, among which uh, the, the investment irrigation program by um, National Recovery and Resilience Plan. In this procedure, uh, irrigation board not com for irrigation board not compliant with water volumes monitoring in Sigrian, the intervention planned in Dania 
could not be selected for funding. Uh, this fulfillment is uh, verified in uh, Sigran and recorded uh, in Dania. So then the maintenance of compliance remain for all beneficiaries a, a, a post-financing condition to keep the funding. Um, it, mm, so this compliance represents both a precondition for funding and an ex ante an ex post obligation. Within the reform uh, provided by National Recovery and Resilience Plan, uh, the Italian government has recently approved a law that uh, to extend this procedure to all public fundings of collected irrigation investment. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. And uh, we are, I'm very interested to understand the, the possibility of uh, information of this database. Uh, I think I, I will meet you <laughs> to understand it, to be informed. Thank you. Uh, Luigi Petta Enea? Yes. Here, uh, Here I, hope, I am. Thank you. I hope you, you can see the, the screen. Let me see. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for the for the invitation. Uh, I'm Luigi Petta from uh, ENEA, uh, which is the uh, Italian National Agency for uh, New Technologies, uh, Energy, and uh, Sustainable Economic Development. And I belong to uh, the Laboratory for Technologies for the Efficient Use and Management of Water and Wastewater. Um, I will talk about um, a, a general framework about water stress and droughts, and then a uh, few words about any activities towards a circular economy approach in water management. Uh, well, um, I will go very uh, quickly on the uh, general and, uh, and, current, uh, and current framework um, because uh, previous colleagues uh, already described. Uh, we can just say that uh, latest new on the uh, on the water uh, on the water front uh, are not really uh, comfortable since uh, uh, there is the IPCC uh, summary report uh, who, who say us that we are uh, almost missing uh, the 1.5 uh, degrees uh, uh, increase target and most probably we are approaching to a 3.5 or uh, even more uh, increase uh, of temperature in the in the century uh, we are living uh, an extraordinary uh, water drought especially especially in uh, northern italy uh, due to a very dry and dot 2022 uh, winter um, there are some italian region who suffered uh, about plus six degrees uh, uh, respect the uh, the average value and uh, um, there is a very big de decrease in rainfalls uh, minus 60 percent uh, almost uh, in the uh, Al Al alpine uh, region um, ISPRA also say yes that in last 30 years water availability has decreased of about 20% in relation in relation to uh, to historic uh, references uh, well, this situation is uh, um, is extraordinary, but we have to say that is the result of uh, decades of uh, uh, water uh, water resource uh, um, compromission. Let's say uh, we there are um, uh, several water stress factors like uh, uh, urbanization, population growth, uh, higher living standards, and climate change effects which uh, determine effects and uh, risks. 
like uh, water scarcity, uh, water quality degradation, and uncontrolled food, and uh, related impacts on water resource availability and on, and on the environmental uh, and economic and social uh, fields. Um, about one people over three uh, do not have uh, access to basic water sanitation uh, services, and about the 80% of industrial and municipal wastewater is released in the environment without any treatment. Uh, this is the situation. Uh, uh, in Italy, uh, the situation is uh, uh, characterized by several, uh, several uh, um, indicators uh, which uh, enlighten uh, some uh, danger, uh, dangerous aspects. For example, uh, Italy is the second EU country for, for water uh, withdrawal for uh, potable use, so we extract uh, a lot of water and, and we use it very in a, in a very wrong way. Uh, the half per, the the half uh, the half of this uh, total amount is used for uh, agricultural uh, purposes, uh, but we are also the country where is the, which is the um, at, at the first uh, step for uh, water consumptions, uh, potable water consumptions, uh, and for mineral water use. At the same time, we, we have the, uh, one of the lowest water tariff uh, in, uh, in Europe and a, uh, one of the lowest investment level in water infrastructure also in uh, Europe. Especially Italy uh, suffered the so-called uh, Italian water service divide when there is a very uh, sens uh, sensitive uh, difference between uh, water services among different regions in Italy and especially between northern and southern Italy. Uh, what we can do, uh, there is a, a lot of, uh, of actions that could be um, uh, carried out to uh, to tackle uh, the uh, the the water stress uh, we can uh, we can go to uh, water demand management actions like reducing losses in water distribution systems or wastefulness reduction like increased awareness in water uses introduction of economic incentives, improving water use efficiency, and introduction of demand-driven resource allocation schemes. At the same time, we can work on increasing storage capacity, uh, surveys uh, reservoir for rainwater storage are needed, uh, groundwater recharge actions and favoring natural uh, retention, uh, for example, by applying natural based solution also in urban context. Uh, and finally, we can increase water availability, uh, improve and efficient with water treatment will save uh, um, water, uh, water bodies from uh, pollution effects, treated with water reuse and desalination of sea uh, of seawater. All these actions need to be uh, coupled to uh, an industrial water cycle management. Uh, we need to clarify and simplify legislative framework and permitting procedures and at the same time we need to provide uh, to to favor water users uh, involvement and awareness uh, raising uh, in green color uh, i uh, enlightened uh, the action which uh, which see uh, Enea working on these fields, um, especially we are uh, a laboratory dealing with wastewater and uh, in wastewater uh, management, we, uh, we can see the key to uh, implement uh, a, circular, uh, a circular water management approach because uh, at, at the moment, uh, wastewater treatment plants are simply uh, considered, have been considered like um, uh, facilities only aimed at ensuring the uh, the final quality uh, at the final discharge, but we uh, we need to uh, to consider that uh, more and more uh, like ur urban biorefineries. 
uh, developing innovative solutions and approaches uh, um, aimed at several objectives. For example, uh, reuse of uh, treated with water, uh, sludge valorization and recovery in agriculture when, when the quality of sludge uh, allows this practice, uh, nutrient recovery and energy re uh, valorization and uh, recovery. Uh, this is so a new way to uh, um, uh, to consider uh, wastewater treatment plants and the, the main goal is to uh, provide a safe uh, reuse of the primary resource uh, which is the water. In Italy we reuse so uh, few uh, um, uh, treated wastewater according to the national rule which is the uh, 185-2003 uh, uh, which fix, fix uh, 55 parameter standards that's but we have to uh, we have to move to uh, to new concepts uh, to new uh, legislative approaches uh, like uh, the one given by the EU regulation 2020741 uh, which define four quality classes uh, according to the parameters of the uh, of the wastewater uh, and uh, alternative agricultural uses uh, and also different irrigation techniques uh, allowed. Uh, this regulation will be, will be in force since June 2023 and at the moment Italy provided a, a draft of, the, of a new Italian national decree on wastewater reuse which is uh, under uh, pop, uh, public uh, consultation. Um, let's go to, uh, to the action uh, carried out by uh, by Enea and one of the uh, interesting projects that I like to uh, quickly describe to you is the uh, value C in project uh, valorization of uh, of treated wastewater and sludge in the in the view of circular economy and industrial symbiosis. This is a project we, which was uh, recently uh, concluded and was uh, funded funded by uh, Emilia Romagna region under the uh, FESR uh, uh, funding uh, funding line uh, there are uh, several uh, several partners like Bologna University Ferrara University Politecnico di Mil of Milano and uh, CNR and uh, the, um, the general objective of, of, of the project was to uh, implement full-scale circular economy and industrial symbiosis approaches and technologies for municipal and industrial wastewater and sludge management value chain. Uh, so uh, during the project, we we focused on uh, uh, different issue uh, like wastewater reuse, uh, recovery from wastewater as sludge, uh, microplastic, and then and emerging compounds, and industrial symbiosis uh, approach. I will just uh, give you a quick uh, overview of the wastewater uh, reuse uh, activities, uh, which uh, include the the, the realization of a uh, prototype uh, providing the, uh, the online monitoring of uh, wastewater quality uh, and we uh, we monitor that uh, at, the, uh, at the, um, the out of the uh, secondary and tertiary uh, treatment. Uh, we assessed uh, the effect of such wastewater on the plant soil uh, system uh, through a, uh, um, uh, a, um, uh, a some uh, some uh, um, cultures which were uh, planted inside the uh, the wastewater uh, the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we evaluated the fertilizing potential uh, given by uh, this uh, this wastewater, um, and providing technical economic assessment for full scale reuse practice. Reuse practice 
uh, we also evaluate the, uh, the comparison between water demand and wastewater supply uh, potential um, and uh, microplastics and uh, emerging compounds uh, monitoring. Uh, this was a very, uh, let's say, a very successful uh, experience since after uh, the project, the, the region signed with the, uh, with the water manager uh, which is uh, ERA, uh, uh, an agreement for giving the uh, the wastewater to the uh, agricultural uh, to the to the agricultural site, and we are now closing the six months uh, trial uh, period for the full scale uh, application, and we are uh, still going on for, with uh, with new um, experimental trials inside Cesena wastewater treatment plants. Um, we also focused very much on uh, on uh, uh, microplastics, microfibers, and uh, emerging compounds uh, monitoring in uh, in wastewater. Uh, emerging compounds which were targeted were bisphenol and phthalates. Uh, we uh, we um, and we provided a, a proposal for. Uh, procedures for sampling and analysis uh, microplastics and, uh, and microfibers. They were identified through uh, uh, FTIR uh, and, and microscopy, and we created uh, if, uh, we start created a, a morphological uh, database. Uh, um, very quickly, uh, other actions towards uh, wastewater reuse are uh, the activities carried out with the Italian Commissioner for, uh, for Wastewater. Uh, we uh, provided the feasibility study uh, on the different management options related to the final discharge of uh, Catania City wastewater treatment plant. And we uh, drafted out a, a plan which would be able when uh, fully implemented uh, to, to provide the irrigation of uh, 6,000 to 13,000 hectares in Catania province from summer to, uh, to winter time. Uh, again, uh, we uh, provided studies for the efficiency of uh, uh, the energy balance of wastewater treatment, uh, treatment plants. And we uh, developed a specific software, uh, which is a, a tool supporting decision makers, planners, and operators in the integrated water cycle for the evaluation of wastewater treatment plant efficiency potential in a specific uh, territorial uh, context. And finally, uh, uh, together with uh, the Italian Ministry for the Economic Development, uh, we uh, we uh, participated and we coordinated the uh, reciproco project, uh, which is the implementation of tools and initiatives on the circular economy uh, for the benefit of customers regarding water. Uh, from one side, we identified uh, um, uh, global water stress index on basing and territorial basis, uh, we, which is a procedure uh, which will uh, uh, drive us to evaluate, let's say, a, a water footprint referred to water basin. And uh, uh, later on, we uh, within this project, a uh, lot of uh, several uh, urban living labs were uh, were, were carried out, uh, proposing uh, uh, different topics uh, related to water management, with the final uh, objective to increase uh, public participation and public awareness about water uh, uses. Uh, that's it. Sorry, uh, uh, just just a quick conclusion. Um, we could say that water scarcity and droughts should be considered as ordinary condition and not anymore um, emergency. Uh, there is the urgent need uh, to, of effective actions to re reduce anthropogenic uh, pressures and uh, water resource uh, ma management should be uh, provided more and more. 
medium and long term water management plans should be defined and water resource allocation plant would be will be very uh, important uh, to set up especially in emergency periods and research actions should be harmonized providing reference best practice and implementing effective technology transfer programs thank you very much Thank you, Luigi Petta. I agree, completely agree with your conclusion. And uh, we go ahead and uh, I leave the word to Adriano Battilani of ANVI. Thank Adriano. you. Good uh, evening to everybody. I will try to share the screen. Okay. You can see my screen. Okay. Yes. Now is uh, in presentation mode. So we will talk about what we are uh, doing in terms of uh, infrastructuring and governing agricultural water network. And the main purpose is, uh, is to find the way to increase the resilience to recurrent drought impact on our agroecosystems. When we talk about uh, infrastructure, we are talking about uh, of something that is really shaping the ecosystem, is shaping the socioeconomic context is shaping the territories for decades or centuries. When we are doing a new infrastructure, this infrastructure will last over generations. And it's, it's fair to wonder ourselves if it is really necessary to build or to refurbish an existing infrastructure or to building a new infrastructure. And uh, during this, uh, this meeting today, at the beginning, uh, Dr. Grassi was uh, mentioning that agriculture has to change and go toward less water demanding crops. Uh, well, the problem is, uh, the first question is, is it really irrigation avoidable? We can do it, we can move toward the different crops. What kind of crops? If we are analyzing the minimum water requirement of the normal Mediterranean crops, most of the Mediterranean crops that are characterizing our agriculture, we can see that the average uh, summer precipitation, that is the red lines, uh, are not matching with the minimum requirements, which means that we have to change the paradigm. Evapotranspiration is fast increasing. In the last uh, 20 years, it's increased more than 20%. And in the average, we have peak of evapotranspiration occurring during uh, the heat waves that are over 40% with respect to the normal condition. So in that context, uh, irrigation need to change paradigm. Now it's conceived uh, as a mean to increase productivity and profitability in favor of the farmer and in detriment of the aquatic environment. But it's not anymore the case. Crops need a minimum amount of water to produce. So if this water is not available, is not uh, is not coming with the rain, is not uh, something that we have available naturally, we have to integrate, we have to supplement water in order to have a product, a productive crops. What will happen otherwise? What is already happening? What is happening is the food prices are reflecting the, the scarcity on the market and fueling inflation. What has happened in the last couple of years, and not mainly in 2022, is the inflation was rising up to 11%, but the food prices was increasing 15%, fueling inflation. But what is happening now, today? Today is happening that we are facing food scarcity. Two weeks ago, Morocco stopped exportation of foodstuff. 
Spain is uh, in this day importing more than exporting. Spain is the first exporter of foodstuff in Europe. UK, the, the Great Britain is lacking potato. They cannot produce enough because of the drought, but they cannot even buy on the market. And this is the point. If we are not anymore able to uh, produce enough food stuff for ourselves, we will face soon a situation in which there is no value, no money that has value for food, which means that there is no offer. You can have a good financial sector, a good industrial sector, you can earn a lot of money, but with this money, you cannot buy the food that is not on trade. So the situation is uh, serious. We are facing cereal scarcity and we need water. We need water, as was correctly pointed out many times, uh, in, uh, in Italy we have enough precipitation and the precipitation are not even, and not well distributed from our north, south and so on. If, if we look on the distribution of the, the precipitation, we can see that there are areas in which we have high level of precipitation and are accumulating water, water that is then released and transported through the plain into the sea. What we have to do, we have to store, we have to hold this precious water on the territories. And this is exactly our mission and our plan. What we have to imagine, where we can store this water, there is not so much, there is no park, but we know that there's no pack is out of our control. We cannot cool down the, the mountain and keep the snow. Lakes, natural lakes, we can better regulate the natural lakes, but we can have, have more storage basin. We can store more in the soil. The soil is the biggest reservoir we can imagine. And we have store as much water we can to the soil but also in the shallow water table and the aquifer, as Rudy was saying before. It's not uh, a new idea, as Rudy mentioned it, but it's very effective and low cost. And we have also to promote as much storage we can in the root zone in order to catch as much as possible of the precipitation during the cropping season. So we are following a, a, a track. There is a new paradigm, for instance, in Netherlands and in Belgium and many other countries in the North Europe that are now facing for the first time drought in their area, Northern area. Keep the water on the territories. One of the less costly way is to allow, that is not uh, possible today just because of uh, regulation law or, uh, or some uh, uh, let's say, opposition from uh, people that want to keep more water inside the river. But uh, one way is to use the, the water network, the canals, the irrigation canals are storage. As far as we have water in this moment and the canal are totally empty, let the water be pumped into the canals in order to distribute this water in the territories and keep this water in the soil and shallow the aquifer reservoir. It is a, a way to allow diffuse of the rain harvest and aquifer recharge. It's not the point aquifer recharge, as Rudy was mentioning, that's very effective and, and uh, actually in favor, but it's a diffused way to keep the water on the territory. But it's not enough. What we are proposing as AMBI is uh, to create a network of uh, interconnected when it is possible, but a network of uh, small storage basins, very small, around five million cubic meter each, more or less. And this can be used to, uh, to keep uh, water and to distribute this water that is not taken directly from the river, is the water that is dispersed in small stream, in a small basin catchment that are not really contributed to the ecological flow of the big rivers. So this plan is a, an idea to create a system, not just an infrastructure, 
but in infrastructure that is inserted in a system. A system that is uh, collecting water is uh, interconnected, producing hydropower, for instance, uh, during the day and then using the, uh, uh, solar energy produced by floating uh, uh, solar panel to pump it up during the night when it is not used in order to have more energy is able to connect and to collect the, the treated wastewater coming from the, the cities that otherwise can be used only during the day and during the season of the irrigation. Is uh, able to recharge aquifer to, to make an effective contrast to soil subsidence or salt wedge intrusion. So is uh, the way to enabling uh, the infrastructure are uh, enabling uh, to uh, have a, an effective management of all the irrigation or water use schemas. So storage and supply. Then we have other soft uh, uh, infrastructure that are the irrigation methods uh, or the decision support system. Those that was Francesco Cavaz and the CR were, were proposing before. So it's also a way to decarbonize water supply in agriculture, that is an energy demanding sector. And when we are talking about energy demanding, we are saying water demanding because this energy is produced using water, either power or using water for cooling. In, ca in case of thermal energy. So we have a need of energy in spread over the territory to make possible precise irrigation. So we need to create energy communities in order to apply a real uh, agriculture 4,0, the digital agriculture. So we have to create a water and energy infrastructure that can work together. This is an example from California and India. They are putting a solar panel as uh, CR uh, is projecting to do in, uh, in a part of the canal to produce uh, energy, but also to save water because these solar panel are shadowing the, the canal are keeping the, the water temperature low and are reducing evaporation from the surface. So in some of the, one of these examples, they reported that they were saving 73 million of liter of water producing 8,4 million of kilowatt. If we are imagining that we can cover about 5% of the Italian agricultural canal network, we cannot produce 13 gigawatts of energy, clean energy saving water, both because we are not evaporating, but mainly because we are not using this water for energy production. So, and we will bring energy in area that now are off grid. So we can then finally apply other soft infrastructure, the, the precise irrigation, let's say, so we can uh, secure on-demand water and energy access, that is the first condition. The high uh, performing technology in irrigation are all water demanding in term of access to water. They need water on demand. You cannot uh, have water on shift. You cannot imagine a drip irrigation having water for four hours every 15 days as it happened in Lombardy the last year. These kind of devices cannot work in this way, are not designed, not even imagined to work on such long shift for so short time. And they need energy, need the energy that must be spread everywhere in the countryside. That is not the case to reach or to make a pumping station that is pressurizing an irrigation system need to be accessible and energy source. We need suitable water quality, enabling water reuse and so on. But we are also talking about something that we can transport 
transformer, not transform, we are designing, really, we are indeed designing as multifunctional water and biodiversity storage. How we can store the biodiversity? Every kind of, of uh, infrastructure is now classified as uh, anthropic uh, disturbance. So it's something that is uh, alterating a bit the hydromorphological uh, uh, status of the river or in a way is creating a disturbance. We can avoid this disturbance, for instance, collecting the water and keeping biodiversity inside the basin when there is availability of water, keeping the biodiversity inside and let this uh, ecosystem thrive, so uh, grow during the period in which the river has not enough flow, is even below the eco flows, and then re-inject this biodiversity when the condition in the river are suitable to let restore the river in biodiversity. That is exactly the way to increase enormously the resilience of the river ecosystem in case of extreme water stresses. On top of this, what we want to do, we want to organize the territory in a way that we can certificate each of the steps. It's not enough to say we are doing we want to demonstrate and certificate the impact and the action we are undertaking in favor of the environment and the sustainability of irrigation. So we are promoting, we will present in May, a, a new standard, Goccia Verde, that is a private standard that is certificating the um, sustainability of the water uses. And it works on the territories. It's not a production certification is not certificating an apple or a peer is certificating a process. The process means that the consortia will undertake and in a way propose and dictate actions that the territory will take over and the farmers and the producer organization that are inside these territories will apply. So coordination from the consortia that are in charge of the management of the water in this area and evaluation of the impact and continuous improvement of the sustainability. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Battilani. Very interesting your point of view from uh, AMBI and the uh, very importance of irrigation on agriculture also to uh, lower the prices of uh, food uh, in this moment. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, I want to introduce uh, uh, Andrea Ferrone of Suez that uh, we talk about uh, desalination, experience of desalination. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Um, good, uh, uh, good morning, good evening. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm here to present uh, SUA experience in desalination. First of all, quick introduction about uh, SUA's experience in uh, uh, water systems. Uh, nowadays, uh, till now, SUA has designed uh, more than 2,500 wastewater plants, more than 260 desalination plants utterly on run, more than 10,000 water treatment plants, and uh, giving you an idea, uh, more than 3,000 drinking water plants. Nowadays, uh, 1 billion of people, we could say, is served by a plant designed by Suez. What is uh, uh, the, in the, the expertise Suez have inside? Uh, we have a bunch of uh, um, process engineer and technicals that are quite familiar with wastewater reuse, biosolid, drinking water and desalination technologies. 
we can cope with uh, internal but also with external technology and partners to cope uh, to follow the full scope of a full design plant to produce potable water both from uh, ground or surface water and seawater as well we have a big experience and qualified people to develop design and build quite large plants and we can say that uh, since more than eight years uh, Suez uh, is managing uh, all the projects from engineering and product and production engineering and procurement to design and build and uh, financial uh, we are on the top of uh, innovation for uh, water by solid and layer, and we uh, the scope of this innovation nowadays is focusing in improving energy efficiency, resource recovery, and of course sustainability. We have a full uh, worldwide recognized ability to commit with the, the uh, delivery delivery of plant on time with all the guarantee um tested and proven and uh, we are as objective to of the um sustainable goal um fixed by um 2030 that are the sdg6 ensure availability and sustainability sustainability man sustainable management and water salination for all and make cities and human settlement inclusive safe resilient for <coughs> and sustainable Now, uh, a focus on the desalination. What is the scope of desalination? Is to um, to respond to the very actual challenge that is the water scarcity issue. The, the desalination on the coastal region nowadays represent a good solution to produce clean and uh, good water for the arid region the uh, um, capability to build a RO desalination plant stays in the good pretreatment good design and robust pretreatment solution and to uh, cope with the RO design that could be flexible at all the condition the seawater uh, can um, at all the condition the seawater uh, have during the life plan. The, the plant, the salination plant should be, must be sustainable. And uh, to check its sustainability during the design, Suez um, perform, carry out study to uh, model modeling the brine reject in the seawater. On the top of this, in the design, the um, uh, application of renewable energy is uh, uh, on the top of the attention, as well as the less chemical consumption. Of course, this sustainability has a big impact in the optimization of the operation and maintenance performance. The uh, purification this, the RO system and the desalination process are as well applied in industrial field in order to uh, produce the sorry do you see my screen oh we are only we are we, we don't we don't see any slide at the presentation. Okay, sorry, I, I didn't understand. I'm, I'm trying to... Uh... Uh, I, I, thought, uh, I thought that you make only... Uh, no, 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 it's, it's my fault. Now, uh, do you see my screen now? No. Okay, now? Uh, okay. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yes. No. Uh, okay, okay, now. Sorry. I will see. Okay, anyhow, the introduction was just on Suez's capability. Now, um, I'm uh, I'm sharing uh, the, um, the challenges RO is affording, is uh, addressing with. So, we are talking about high quality of water, 
uh, useful for the arid region and uh, uh, especially for coastal region, we can provide good water from desalination and uh, uh, how to perform this, uh, uh, this desalination is to have um, a robust pretreatment uh, uh, section and uh, uh, to design the RO with a, a good flexibility design. The, um, the sustainability is a, a focus or in the sweat uh, in the sweats uh, um, business and uh, the uh, during the design sweats perform by his own uh, many times the uh, brine reject model inside the sea and uh, design the plant um, putting attention to use as much as possible renewable energy and to reduce as much as possible the use of chemical in order the plant could be quite sustainable. The operation and maintenance perform is a concept as consequence a optimize and reduce. The RO uh, design is uh, used as well for the purification of process water in order uh, to reuse the wastewater and in uh, uh, service water or demi water in the industrial plant. This is a map of the um, RO uh, desalination plant used for, um, uh, for production of potable water all around the world. Uh, as you can see, uh, we uh, designed and built uh, a big amount of plants in the Middle East, uh, in Australia, uh, in Latin America, and uh, three as well in Europe, two of them in Spain, and one is under construction in Italy, uh, that is the plant of Elba Island. This is a draft of the main reference we have in the salination. One of the biggest plants we perform has been uh, the Melbourne uh, plant in Australia. Just to give you a quite uh, uh, short picture of the plant, uh, this, this plant represents a 30 year contract that will be carried out by Sweats in uh, uh, maintenance and assistance till the 2039. The project capacity is uh, huge. We are talking about 440,000 cubic meter per day. And uh, this uh, uh, produce potable water for a population of 4.5 million of people. The reverse osmosis plant is made of 27 trains of first pass and 24 trains are second pass. And uh, nowadays, uh, on the plant itself, uh, are 4,200 uh, 4, employees are working from 20 different nationalities. Uh, one, the biggest challenge this plant is uh, uh, respond to is to cover uh, the uh, demand of potable water from Australia that since uh, many years from now is facing a big, big draft crisis. The solution has been a modular solution in order to minimize the, uh, the time of erection and every part of design has been studied to uh, minimize the um, uh, ecological impact. The result has been to produce a huge amount of quality desalted water and uh, one of the most technically advanced uh, and environmentally friendly plant. Another plant uh, uh, we did uh, uh, and I want to show you is in the uh, Gulf area in Middle East. The capacity is quite uh, uh, the half of uh, uh, Melbourne, and uh, this is a, uh, a plant with 26 train and 12 in the first pass and 12 train on the second pass. In the Gulf area, the problem with the seawater is the um, presence of algae and colloids components. So in this area, a particular attention must be uh, done to the pretreatment with the flotation. Uh, Suez has many uh, patented machine used, used to prevent and to solve this problem with this kind of seawater. Another big plant in Australia is uh, at the Perth plant on the west coast of Australia, and this cover 
2 million of habits in population. Uh, smaller, uh, smaller than, uh, than Melbourne, in any case, cover a big amount of uh, water produced. We are talking about 143,000 cubic meter per day. 12 trains at first pass and six on the second pass. Sri Lanka, this one is under construction and uh, is, it represents the first seawater desalination in Sri Lanka. Uh, Suez is taking care about design and will carry it out as well, the, the ONM, during the next seven years. And now the focus I want to um, uh, point out for your, to your attention is the uh, plant we are now erecting in Italy. This plant is the desalination plant of the Elba Island. Elba Island is, a, uh, is an island um, in Tuscany region, and nowadays is fed by potable water from the mainland by means of a submarine pipeline 10 kilometers long. On the top of it, the mainland produced the water salinity of these uh, um, of, of the um, of the wealth sources. So the mission of the project has been to make the island the island self-sustained for potable water perspective, producing inland water from the sea. To give you a rough idea, uh, this this let me say is the first example will be the first example in Italy. As, as, as an appreciable uh, site. We are talking about only of 6,900 cubic meter of drinking water per day, but nevertheless, with this amount, it represents the biggest potable water plant from seawater in Italy. The population served by this plant is going from 3,000 people during winter time, but it could arrive till 300,000 during summertime. In this case, Suez is taken the design and bid and operation can contract, including one year, one year of ONM. This reverse osmosis is made by means of four trains. The solution found has been taking the seawater, passing through a battery of sand filter, through a perfiltration and then a single pass reverse osmosis with energy recovery system. To remineralize water, make it potable, there is a final mixing with well water. I'm talking about inland wells, uh, pre treated for the purpose. For this project, intake line and brine outfall is out from the scope of Suez but uh, is rejecting and taking uh, water uh, one kilometer and too far from the, um, the coast. Nowadays, the erection work are just started. Uh, we are counting pr to produce water at the beginning of 2024. And what I can show to you is the 3D rendering uh, of the design we uh, finalized. So this is the outline of the plant the basin for the seawater from the intake, the battery of dual medial filter, the cartridge filter upstream the RO, the four trains of RO, and the well water treatment to ram in the water. At the end, the potable water basin that supply water to the entire island. Challenge faced in this RO design, but generally speaking, can be extend, this, this pitch can be extended to every RO design, is to design of the RO must be suitable to afford the variation of total salinity and temperature during all the plant life. In Elba Island, we studied carefully the design in order to minimize the skid dimension that must lifted and transported in a small island like Elba. And the use of pressurization uh, system uh, gave the opportunity to reduce at minimum the specific consumption per medic cubic meter of permit. To give you a rough idea, we are talking about uh, 3.9 kilowatt per hour per cubic meter of permit produced. 
The design of RO membrane should be quite accurate because the purpose is to produce potable water. So we have to guarantee a high salt rejection, but as well, we must guarantee rejection of uh, iron not wanted in the uh, potable water, such as boron content. That is quite critical for potable water that it, in fact, the limit is less than one milligram per liter. Suez is uh, uh, at the Suez put the best, uh, a, a big part of the attention, of course, on innovation. And in our role of this, in the desalination arrow as well, we are putting effort to improve the, uh, the treatment in order to optimize the uh, sustainability of the plant. Nowadays, we are increasing uh, and we are designing new uh, CDAF filter in order to pretreat the uh, seawater more efficiently. And this is in particular applicable for uh, hot seas like Middle East or uh, Mexican uh, Caribbean Gulf. We are studying solution to remineralize with more and more compact limestone filter. And we are investing in research to recover from the concentrate brine uh, high value material such as magnesium, lithium, and rubium. This is important to maintain the circularity of um, the economy in this plant as well. I thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, very much. And uh, uh, last but not least, Vigil Del Fuoco the, uh, for your interview. Uh, Lorenzo Elia or, or, or Marco Dimetti? I have a, a double name. Uh, let's present yourself. Uh, yes, I'm uh, Lorenzo Elia. Uh, I'm the director of the National Operational Center on behalf of the um, uh, Central Director of the Emergency, Marco, Marco Gimenti. Um, I just start to, call, to share my video. Can you see it? Yes, we see. Okay. Um, as I said, um, I'm uh, Lorenzo Lia and I'm from the National uh, uh, Fire Corps. Um, what I'm going to uh, speak about today, it's uh, about uh, um, the, what climate change brings to the uh, Italian firefighters. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to be very fast because it's, <laughs> I think, enough uh, late. Um, uh, try to, I try to, um, to um, define what, uh, what is the direct impact of the um, uh, climate change on the uh, fire and rescue service. Uh, first of all, uh, other temperatures. Then we can, uh, we, can um, we can see that uh, about our, uh, our experience that uh, there is even an increase of uh, EV uh, rains uh, all over the year, increase uh, drought, and then uh, ocean warming and rising. Even the uh, ocean rising can uh, give some problem, some trouble to, to us. Um, so about drought, so that is the, uh, the, uh, the main uh, focus of today. Drought, uh, the first, uh, uh, the first causes that uh, we can see as a uh, firefighter is a uh, uh, forest fire increase. Uh, what about the forest fire increase? We can, we can do uh, some uh, consideration on what is the, uh, the trend of the, 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 the wildfire uh, during the uh, last few years. 
uh, versus uh, the total intervention of uh, firefighters in Italy. Uh, we have in Italy about uh, 1 million of intervention uh, for year. And um, the wildfires, it's uh, um, um, a percentage that can go uh, from, let's say, from 5% uh, to uh, 12%. In 2018, we have um, a decrease because it was... Excuse a... me, excuse me. Yes. Uh, we, we see only the, the front of the... Ah, okay. The... Sorry. Ah. Sorry. Thank you. You have to skip. I'll try. Thank to... you. Thank you. I try to, to share again. Now it's okay. If I move, okay. we you can see it. If I move, we see, we see the single. We see the single slide. Okay, you can see the change of the slide. Yes. Or oh, is still freezing the, the slide? I... Oh no, we, we see the, the single slide. Perfect, okay. So the, I was showing, uh, uh, which is the trend of the um, uh, fire, uh, wild fire uh, versus the uh, total intervention by year uh, from 2017 to uh, last year. Um, uh, I was showing that um, uh, there was uh, a good uh, value in 2018. Then we, have, uh, we start again to increase uh, the number. Um, in the past, uh, we had a situation that, uh, along the year that uh, during the first quarter of the year, uh, the, 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 say the, um, the forest fire were uh, con concentrated to the north of Italy. Uh, meanwhile, during the rest of the year, uh, the south and the middle of the nation uh, were interested. But this, uh, during the, uh, the year, is changing because, um, in, as we can see in this uh, uh, picture, um, this is uh, a distribution of the number of uh, forest fires along the year. This one is for the 2018, this is for 2019, 20, and 21. As you can see, there, is a, a, there, there was uh, a main concentration during the summer. There is uh, the, the worst period. It was the worst period for Italy. But as you can see, moving uh, toward uh, 2020, Start, we, uh, we start to have some uh, uh, fires, e uh, a lot of fires, even in the, in the winter campaign, you see here and here. Last year, it was very, uh, very um, relevant, this, uh, um, uh, this increase of uh, uh, winter fire. And this year, of course, the scale is different. We can, we can see, uh, something of uh, similar over the last year. So what we can say that the, uh, the drought, drought, of course, uh, uh, bring uh, uh, more forest fires. More forest fires uh, bring um, wooded area reduction. And the wooded area reduction combined uh, with the soil, soil absorp absorption, capacity reduction due to the fact that uh, we don't have more vegetation. And with the increase of duration and the intensity of uh, heavy rains, uh, the question is, uh, can bring something like a flood uh, increase? Looking at uh, the data that we have, uh, this is not uh, di uh, direct connected. In fact, the green line that you can see here, it's uh, the percentage of the water damage intervention of, uh, that we uh, registered in the same uh, uh, set of year, years. And uh, we can see there is almost constant this value. So uh, probably uh, as conclusion, we can say that uh, drought, of course, uh, increase the number of wildfire. Uh, for sure, 
is modifying the distribution in time and in place of uh, forest fire because it's moving toward the, the winter season and seems not to affect the floods. Uh, uh, this is what uh, it's uh, our consideration about uh, drought and uh, in very, let's say, fast uh, uh, consideration. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we finish uh, well, almost in perfect line with the program, uh, our meeting. I, I well, let, uh, let me thank all the speakers. Let me thank the uh, co-organizer, CREA and uh, CHAIR. Uh, let me thank also all the uh, people that uh, in some time, in some part of the meeting, uh, uh, have been uh, present at uh, this meeting, at this very interesting meeting. I bye-bye for this moment. I think it's uh, with uh, many of, uh, of, uh, of you, we meet for uh, too deep uh, the, the thing that we talk about uh, this uh, uh, afternoon. Thank you very much uh, to all. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.